If you're anything like me, you particularly enjoy living and not being dead. And I would argue that that is most people on this planet, unless something is horribly going wrong in your life. For example, you watched The Rings of Power season two. Is that a fucking baby orc? My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Well, unfortunately today, uh, well not today, a couple of days ago, we had a 19 year old bodybuilder pass away and i think this situation is a bit more interesting than others and what's interesting is that a lot of people claim that this was due to some sort of steroid abuse and i want to talk about why that might be and i think this is important for a lot of us because ultimately what we're doing in the bodybuilding community, fitness community, biohacking community is altering the biology of our body. And we can certainly have these things happen to us, especially at a younger age. 19 is pretty unfounded. We haven't seen that often, but this is one of the first times we will see something like this. So just yesterday, there was a publication that came out with a 19 year old bodybuilder found dead in his home in Brazil after suffering an apparent heart attack, according to multiple reports. Pavlak had transformed over over the past five years into a finely tuned bodybuilder as a way to combat obesity, which had made him an icon in his native Brazil. The teen who began bodybuilding in 2019 regularly competed in competitions in Santa Cantor, Cata, Catarina, a state in the southern part of Brazil, and he was named Mr. Bull, Mr. B Look, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, guys. I'm, tr I'm trying. Mr. Blaminiua. Blaminiu. After he won a U23 competition last year. Also don't know what that means. His first coach said that he is heartbroken and that he feels very proud to have had the opportunity to have coached him and he cared for him like a son. This is a truly interesting situation, but I think what's more important and interesting is we have to question whether this individual was natural and abusing certain compounds or not. Now, if we look at his transformation, it's really impressive. I mean, really impressive. He was obese in a very young age, growing up, continued to have that weight stay around his body, had gyno the whole nine. I mean, not a healthy individual. Of course, he made the transformation that sort of made him into this fitness influencer type body. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind though, this is his physique at the earliest. This is what we're seeing at the earliest of him, which was only the year previous to what I'm about to show you. Okay, so this is basically one year's worth of transformation in, in terms of him working out from this to this. So that is about an exact year, a one month difference, but an exact year. Now, you'll notice quite a few things are different within his physique. He presents a lot more vascularity. Obviously, he's a lot leaner, but there's a strange roundness to his delts, vascularity for sure. It's things that you wouldn't typically see in natural individuals. The reality of the situation is, and I made a video about this, which I recommend people watch, which is how to determine whether someone is using steroids or not. In that video, I talk about these specific things. The typical roundness of the delts and trapezoids, the vascularity and the graininess of sort of the muscle texture. These are typically things you see in someone who is enhanced. And this was him in the competition before the one that we had just posted. So you can see the immediacy of his transformation. Now, normally I'm gonna tell you guys that this kind of physique would be easy to achieve naturally. You could do this realistically, but in that quick, of succession, you do a show, you look like this, and then you do another show and you look like this, usually that kind of rapid progression is going to mean that there's some form of enhancements involved, especially when your starting point was somewhere around here where you truly, and I mean this honestly in the most respectful way possible, you didn't have an amazing physique. It's definitely better than most people on planet earth, but it's not something that I would be like, oh shit, this guy is really enhanced. And if we go to his coach, his account is private and that's kind of unfortunate. He does look like an individual who might be enhanced just based off his profile picture. His coach is also private, but obviously enhanced if we can see that profile picture, which is pretty hard. We go to the other person. They're apparently coaching each other. I don't understand. It's Brazil's crazy. Okay. With bodybuilding, they do some hectic shit. Everyone's a coach. Everyone is writing drug protocols. What I'm trying to say here is that the likelihood that this guy was getting coached by someone who was using quite a bit of enhancements was quite pretty high and the likelihood that that individual was also recommending certain enhancements to 
his client was also pretty high. Now you pair enhancements with in past life of obesity where there is definitely some atherogenic plaque buildup or, or something vascularly not well happening, you are going to cause havoc, not a good situation. You are going to lead yourself to another cardiovascular risk from being in a cardiovascular risk state. So you're going from one risk to the next risk. On top of this, usually to get quite lean, bodybuilders deploy things that we would call sort of like uh, lipolytics, right? Things that burn fat tissue, clenbuterol, T3, T4, which are thyroid hormones, DNP, which is not very unheard of in Brazil. They use it quite a bit, which is something you don't even want to touch with your fucking hands. You never want to touch that stuff. They use all wild assortments of things. It's kind of like wild, wild west out there in some situations. So if, you know, the coach for our, our man here, Mathis, Matthias recommended some pretty harsh and not well thought out protocols to an individual who is previously obese for basically the majority of his life, there would definitely be some really big cause for concern with that individual's specific health. And our friends over at Anabolic Bodybuilding made a video about this actually reacting to Brazilian cycles. And I'm just going to play it really quickly to give you an idea of what sort of milligrams that they're typically running. And trust me, I've talked and had consultation calls with Brazilian coaches and what they tell me I honestly just drop my jaw at. Common thing to be like on a gram of trend, 200 MCGs of T3 and stuff what? like that. I would blow my... Yeah, I've heard, I've heard even more than that. I've actually heard them talk about 1,400 milligrams of trend. 200 micrograms of T3 is insane to me. Here's the thing with T3, what I've seen over the years. T3 is equally as good at melting muscle <laughs> as it is at losing fat. So, it so just to put this into perspective, my typical dosing for trend is going to be something like 35 milligrams per week, maybe 100 milligrams per week. These people are running multiple grams of trend. Now, also to give you some perspective, T3, which is cytomel, which is like the thyroid hormone that your body produces. It's just a synthetic variant of it. It usually is dosed at 12.5 to maybe 25 micrograms for a replacement therapy dose, meaning it would replace what your body's biologically capable of producing. So taking 200 micrograms of T3 would be almost what 10 times the amount that you would actually need for the given dose that's not actual math whenever i say these things guys just realize i'm completely embellishing because <laughs> i don't want to do quick maths in my head that dose of t3 is astronomically high and so this is this is what the upper level well uh, like good coaches are having people do in brazil so imagine a lower level coach with a couple hundred followers who's trying to make it big and get his clients big so that he can get recognition. He's probably prescribing some pretty fucking radical protocols. And I would assume that if our friend here, Matthias, was taking pharmaceuticals, which in my honest belief, I think he was, on top of having already this, this prehistoric evidence of being very obese, look, he was running some pretty hectic shit, I imagine. And that, along with his previous health, I mean, massive concerns there. And I talk about this so many times. For example, let's just say you're taking something like clenbuterol for a cutting season, right? Which is a beta-2 agonist. It's basically gonna increase the rates of well, your metabolic rate. How many calories you burn per day, it's also gonna cause a release of fatty acids into your bloodstream so you can burn them up, meaning that you burn more fat than carbohydrate, for example, for energy. If you dose this in an abusive manner, your heart rate skyrockets and, and it goes up to 80, 90, 100 beats per minute. Let's say that you're on top of this adding in T3. That will also stimulate your cardiac tissue and you will also elevate your heart rate. Now you're sitting at a rested state somewhere around 100 beats per minute, 120 beats per minute which is what most people would be experiencing during pretty vigorous cardio. That chronically for 24 hours a day for however many months is going to kill someone. And this is what a lot of bodybuilders do without considering their health or even checking their heart rate, to be honest with you. It's kind of devastating. Basically, if you're an individual and you're getting coached, you don't want to be doing this, right? Especially if you're, man, if you're, if you've been obese, your main prerogative needs to be living a healthy lifestyle. You can use a little bit of enhancements, sort of some like neurological things, androgens at a little, you know, hefty dose like TRT plus a little bit going beyond, you know, grams of stuff going beyond 800, 900, 1200 milligrams of, of total androgens on top of T3, clenbuterol, all these other bullshit things. 
at astronomically high doses, you are leading yourself down a road that is certain to lead you straight to the death's door and not to an amazing physique. Or it could lead you to an amazing physique, but that physique maybe only might be retained for a singular show, like our friend Matthias here. At 19 years old, this man had died. It doesn't take much to die of a heart attack when your heart rate is elevated beyond its natural rhythm or what it should be. Uh, so just be very precautious out there, you guys, as you're going through your biohacking or bodybuilding, ensure that what you're doing is contextual to you and safe, right? It's not something that someone else prescribed. It is something that you know at a foundational level is going to benefit you for what you specifically need. It's not just this gambit of drugs that you have no idea what's doing as an endpoint. If you like this video, comment down below, subscribe. That really does help. I need a ton of subscribers. My videos are pretty good. I get a lot more views than channels with a million times more subscribers than me, but I just need more subscribers so we can keep pushing this stuff out on the homepage and getting more people to view the content as well. I wanted to let you guys know there's a lot of cool stuff down in the description box below the discord group really cool okay if you guys need help with your biohacking bodybuilding etc that is the place to go become a member you can support this channel and get access to coaches who really do work with this stuff hands-on every single day